Hey everybody, how's it going? So today we're going to be fixing yet another dead MacBook. Chosen completely at random is this A1706 that doesn't turn on. Let's take a look at this A1706 and see what's going on with it. See if we can make it work again and prove once and for all that touch bars are easy and that Paul is simply lazy and unwilling to do the work <laughs> necessary to make these devices work again. Alright, so we're going to switch over to the desk camera over here. Let's open this thing up and see what's going on with it. Paul started his day off with an easy no backlight and then went to lunch and got himself some soup. To celebrate his easy no backlight, that was only one bad resistor. <laughs> a single bad resistor. Doberdan from Slovenia. Something for coffee. Doberdan, you mean? Huh. Doberdan, you Slovenian. Why do you never move out of New York City? I don't move out of New York City because most of my business is still located in New York City. What happened to the shop place you're interested in? I'm waiting to hear back from them, but even if I do hear back from them, I will have to figure out how to make that place work given that they're going to want ridiculous sums of money. And even if they don't want ridiculous sums of money up front, even if they say that I get a year of free rent, they're still going to want a security deposit of somewhere between forty dollars to $60,000, and then another forty dollars to $60,000 in construction. All funded by Paul. Okay. Now we're going to find ourselves one of those little blue things that you used to pry this open. Someone said, I'm here to learn something today. Oh, uh, you came to the wrong stream. All right, I'm going to open this thing up. So I usually use my screwdriver in there very, very lightly, and I put just enough that I can get my pry tool under there. Now, once the pry tool is under here, I have two choices. I can pull it like this. If I do that, it will cut my fingers and slice them to pieces. I could use a suction cup, which never fucking works, so I don't do that. Or I could take this little plastic piece, not care if I break it, and just kind of push over here. It ruins the plastic piece over time, but it's best to ruin the plastic piece than it is to, that is your disposable piece of crap tool, than it is to break the MacBook. These I actually still have from when I used to sell BlackBerry Bold screens back in 2009 and 2010. Those were the days, and they would show up with these. And I had so many of these that I still, to this day, have, the, have bags and bags of these tools left from back when we sold BlackBerry Bold and Curve screens. The BlackBerry Curve 8900 and the BlackBerry Bold 9000 and 9700. You still have some screens left. Don't I still have some BlackBerry Bold screens here, don't, don't I? Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do here is we are going to unplug the battery because when I plug in my USB amp meter, I don't want to see how much power the battery is taking. I only want to see how much the board is taking. So let's just unplug that battery. Loosen this. Okay, we've got a USB-C amp meter right over here that you can get from store.rossmangroup.com. Sometimes we'll sell you a white one. Sometimes we'll sell you a black one. It's like, it's a mystery. It's designed to be a mystery. It's definitely not that we don't have the time to set up proper inventory systems with proper color codes for different items. We just want to surprise you is all. Any good names for a female cat? I like Blackberry. That's a lovely name for a female kitty. Now, as can be seen here, this board is taking 40 milliamps at 5 volts. It's not turning on uh, the charger to 20 volts. Remember, our charger needs to put out 20 volts in order for this to work, and in order for the charger to put out 20 volts, the charger has to communicate with these, that chip, that chip, and the ones on the other side. Those are going to be the USB-C MUX chips. Those are the chips that say, hey, send out, deal with a USB 2 device, deal with a... Deal with a USB 2 device, USB 3 device, this is DisplayPort, this is Thunderbolt, this is charging. It's all done by one chip that controls the cloaca, that is the port in the MacBook. So we're going to see what's going on with those chips, see if they get in the power that they need. But I'm just going to get this board out of the case and go from there. With any luck, this will be a nice, easy board. And this over here is a cable that's really easy to break. So let's just, oh, look at that sexy zoom that we have up there. 135 millimeters of pure optical beautiful zoom. None of that digital rubbish. All right. We have to be very careful around here. So let me get my tweezer. Get under the cable. Slow. There we go. See how it comes off? This, this is a very easy cable to rip. So be very careful with that cable. This is a really sexy lens. I like this lens. Okay, we got the board out, almost out. And one of the things you may have noticed I like to do with the board 
is I like to keep the charge port screwed into the board because it really drives me nuts how easy it is to unplug this thing in contrast to some of the older charge ports. Can you all panel with the fresh desk stuff since she was doing the keyboard? She got a little behind? Thank you. Also, these rubber things. This is one, it drives me nuts when these rubber pieces get stuck on the casing rather than stay on the ports. I hate this design where these little rubber pieces come off very easily. Same thing. Now, the first thing that we need to do is figure out if these chips are getting power. So as I've gone over in many, many other videos, if you take a look at the schematic in the board view, using Paul Daniels' lovely software, you'll see that those chips are going to be powered by PP3V3 underscore G3 hot. And let's see if the rotate feature works. How do you rotate the board in this software now? You, the R, R doesn't do it anymore. You gotta do it manually. Okay, so here we have a CD3215 chip. Now how do I know that the CD3215 is relevant? That's a great question. So over here, you'll see we have a charge port. This is where the charge port plugs into the computer, right? Now, so let's just see what happens if we click on that charge port on the schematic and board view software. So if we click on that, you'll see that there's different lines for different things here. So a lot of it is going to that chip, which is a Thunderbolt chip. But then there's another one here that goes to this. So see, USB-C, CC1, goes to U3200. So that tells me that U3200 is going to be speaking with the charger. Now we go to this chip on the board view. And let's see what it's called. USB-C port controller. So see what I just did just there? I found myself the USB-C port controller by clicking on the charge port, seeing what data lines were there, seeing what they go to, and just following the lines. Now over here, it says VIN. VIN 3V3. So voltage going into it is PP3V3 underscore G3 hot. So we are going to check and see if we have PP3V3 underscore G3 hot on this chip. Let's just go to the desk cam. Let's turn on our multimeter. All right, so it says that PP3V3 underscore G3 hot is over here. And we have zero volts on PP3V3 underscore G3 hot, 0 0.02. So that tells me that there's a problem with the creation of the PP3V3 underscore G3 hot. Now, if we go back to our schematic, let's see if we can find out where that comes from. So let's just search through the PDF for PP3V3 underscore G3 hot. So this is PP3V3 going into something. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm not interested in PP3V3 underscore G3 hot going into something. I'm interested in it coming out of something. That's what we're looking for. So click. No, nope. no, nope. that's it going into a chip. That's it going into a keyboard connector. That's it going into a, a chip that looks like the SMC. That's it going into a pull-up resistor. That's it going into an SMC power supply. That's it going into the Hall effect sensor for the sleep sensor. That's it going to a logic gate. That's it being used for a pull-up resistor for a data line. That's it being going to a connector. And what do we have here? Look, it's coming out of something. Bam. What does it say here? What is this? Okay, check this out. From DCN or PP bus. It goes into U6903, and then PP3V3 underscore G3 hot comes out of it. So this is the chip that's used for creating PP3V3 underscore G3 hot, the MAC 77596. Now, first thing I want to check here is anytime there's a power rail missing, as you've seen in my uh, document that you could find in the links down below, I have a training guide on board repair. If there's a power rail missing, the first thing I'm going to want to do is figure out why it's missing. So there are multiple things that can cause a power rail to go missing. One of those things is if there's a short to ground. So I'm just going to check over here and see if I got a short to ground. And I have a two ohm short to ground. Interesting. So there's two ohms to ground right on this cap over here for PP3V3 underscore G3 hot. So that means that, that I'm not going to be complaining about the chip just yet because the chip may just very well be doing its job, but the chip may be, but its power rail is being shorted to ground. So let's take a look at the board under our nice friend here, the microscope. We're going to look under the microscope and see what it is we find. So we're going to click over here. When we click over there, it's going to show us every single part on the board that where PP3V3 underscore G3 hot goes. So let's take a look for that. 
Now I'm just going to change the color in Paul Daniels' software. Why the hell does, why does he spell color, color? How do you spell color? Why is there a U? That's a proper. Color. Okay, so let's see if there's anything along that line that looks nasty. I haven't looked into a microscope in so long, I damn near forgot how to put, fit my nose in there. Okay. Do we have a cap that looks nasty on pp 3 for 3 underscore G3Hot? Or perhaps a CD3215 that's taking too much power? Please bro. Please bro cam? Yes. Please bro solutions. You have five volts at, uh wow! It's oh, Look at that! Now I wonder if that little cap that looks nasty could be it. Let's see. What do you think the chances are that this is just one bad cap over there? And that that's the only thing that's wrong with this MacBook. There's no way for me to tell that that was what was wrong with it when it's sitting in the slot, Paul. Yeah, sure. You had this all apart, you put it all back together, and now you're taking it apart again. That's not true. It still has its rubber pieces. You know damn well it wouldn't still have its rubber pieces if I had taken it apart. Hey, you had somebody else take it apart. Okay, so let's take a look on the schematic and board view here and see if that's what it is. Now, what do you know? That one cap that just so happens to be corroded is on my PP3v3 underscore G3 hot power line that's not working. Let's see what happens if I were to simply take that capacitor and just yoink it off the board. Now, properly being able to zing is an important skill here. I don't want to bend the board. I don't want to knock anything else off. I just want to zing this cap. And it's, it's right under this shield over here. And the capacitor has been zinged. Look at that zinged little bastard. Yes. All right. Now let's see if it turns on. Yeah, take our... Little, look, look at that. That little rubber piece over here that tried to escape. Made a run for it. Nice try, little rubber piece. I protect my USB rubbers. Okay, we do this. As you can see, it's now putting out 20 volts. It's taking 700 milliamps, which means that this thing is that probably turning on and working. You suck! <laughs> Paul, do you have anything to say? Somebody's salty. I don't know why. Let's see if it gets an image on the screen. Look at these USB rubbers. They fall off like Im immediately. This is so annoying. They fixed this in the A1989 and A1990. I'm fairly certain that when Apple was servicing these machines that they realized that none of these rubbers were going back to the customer. But really, this is so annoying. They, it just, it comes right, look at this, look at this. Even after you put it on, it falls right off. Thank God Apple does not manufacture condoms. My God, the world's population would explode overnight. Ahem. There we go. Just needed me to clear my throat a little bit. We got a pretty Apple logo and this thing's turning on and working. So on this machine, it looked like our issue was that the charger was putting out 5 volts instead of 20 volts. So I showed you how on the board view to just click around around the charge port, see what it's going to. It was going to one chip that's responsible for Thunderbolt, another responsible for something called USB port controller. USB port controller, USB-C port controller sounded important. So then we figured out which power rail was powering that chip. We identified that as PP3v3 underscore G3 hot. Then we saw that PP3v3 underscore G3 hot was short its ground, so we looked around the board using our board view and schematic, and the board view showed me every single component that PP3v3 underscore G3 hot was on, so we looked at every single component that was on under the microscope, we found one that was nasty, we went boop, and now it works again. We have a happy working MacBook, going back to a happy working customer. So that's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. Excellent at data recovery, not the best cameraman. What happened, Steve? Dude, you lost your MacBook box right on my fucking stomach. Oh. What do you think is going to happen if you're standing there? It's a but you didn't run through it, you went through it and pushed through it. Jeez.